So this is the conversion subframe to put the micro engine into the Mini. Uh, everything has been welded on it, uh, apart from this rear bar and a couple of seams on the back, which I can't get to very well because of the jig. Uh, to confirm the location of this bar, we need to get the subframe back in the car. We also need to do that to confirm the location of two extra bars, one of them here, here and from this to there. So the first thing we've got to do, we need the subframe from the jig. Frames ready, tools ready, hardware's ready. Let's get it in. <laughs> Um, that genuinely was the first attempt at fitting it. It's snug, but it's in there. So uh, now on to getting the engine ready to go into the subframe. So this is the Mini's engine. It's a CG10DE from a K11 Nissan Micra. I believe it was used in a few other cars as well, but this one's from a Micra. Um, to get it ready to go into the car, there are a few things that we need to do. Uh, the first is because of the subframe design uh, of, that's in this car, the sump has had to be slightly modified. That's required this notch to be taken out to miss one of the lower bars. Due to the capacity we lose there, this section got added, which brings the bottom of the sump down by about 20 mil to get the capacity back. Uh, I believe this has lost about 400 mil, that's gained about 600. So we actually got a bit more capacity, which is always good. Keeps engine temperatures down, longer service life. That's always a good thing. Fortunately, I don't have any video of the sump being made. Uh, I, this was done over a period of weeks and resulted in uh, numerous attempts to try and seal it. Uh, process basically cut it, with all the necessary plates, weld it, fill it up with petrol, find where the leak is, empty it with petrol, let it evaporate, come back to it the next evening, try and weld the holes up, and keep repeating the process until eventually you get to the point where it doesn't leak. This sump has been tested, there are now no more leaks, and so we gave it a quick coat of paint to protect it. Well, the next steps uh, that we have to do to get this engine ready is to refit the water pump. In the process of building the subframe, this engine was tested in it multiple times in that subframe. Uh, due to when this project was started, unfortunately I didn't have access to a lathe to build some of the spaces that were required for the jig, and so to keep the project progressing, the engine was tested in the frame without 100% knowing where its final location was. It resulted that once I built, later built the frame that the engine was actually back too far by about half an inch, resulting in the water pump hitting one of the strut frame towers. 
Uh, to get around this problem temporarily, the warp pump was removed, however that is since been fixed, the engine has been leaned forward and brought forward fractionally, and the warp pump now misses the tower. So I am now best in effectively refitting that pump to finalise its position, because the next step once this is ready is to get it back in the car, finalise the engine mount positions and fully weld. It's really important to get your surfaces clean before putting uh, new sealant on, so I'm going to use a sand knife blade to scrape off the old sealant. Need to put a enough sealant on obviously to get the water pump to seal against the block but don't put an excessive amount on so that it basically sludges out into the inside and clogs your water pump. to absolutely these up. Um, they've got a very low torque wrench setting of only uh, five foot pounds. So we're just gonna snug them up with our ratchet and uh, then we'll use the torque wrench just to check them afterwards. Oh, well, this is a metric engine and there are uh, metric settings for the bolts. Uh, in this case, it's seven newton meters. The reason for doing it uh, foot pounds is probably because my small torque wrench uh, is only in period. The next step is to get the engine back into the engine bay. Fortunately, due to the design of the frame and the original Mini, the engine and gearbox will not go in through the top, so the only option is to put it in from underneath. In order to do that, the subframe has to come out again, and as it is quite literally the reversal of fitting, I'm not going to bore you with the details. Three, two, one. So the subframe is out. Next is to move the engine off the engine stand and lift that into the engine bay, as that won't go in. engine bay the next job is to put the gearbox in that goes in from underneath the wing 
I'm not going to bother putting the clutch or the flywheel in at this point because I know this main food gearbox is going to fuck out. Uh, they just make it more difficult to fit the gearbox. They're stock items that are actually originally from this engine, so I know that they're going to fit. engine and subframe are in the car but the engine is only currently resting on the bottom of the subframe so the next task is to lift it up and we'll get the engine mounts in uh, to confirm that they are correct. I'm on welding in captive nuts. the episode here because the next step is to take each one of these engine mounts out and weld them up fully but there's a bit more involved with them because they double up uh, for another mount of something else the passenger side is for the radiator the driver side is for the alternator and the rear one is for the gear linkage well i've just finished packing up as you can see it's gone dark now uh, thanks for watching if you want to keep up to date with the progress of the build uh, please subscribe or you can follow the link uh, to the build thread on the mini forum Link is in the description below. Hmm. Empty engine stand.